Today in history, 4th of June, today we're going to talk about camels. Camels. They've been used as beasts of burden for millennia, and the creature is, in many, many ways, vastly superior and more suited to the task than even the sturdiest of equids. Equids, by the way, did have to look this up to make sure. That means horses. For example, a typical camel can carry in excess of 300 kilos, that's 661 pounds of supplies without any issues, which is more than twice the weight that a horse or mule could carry at similar distances and speeds. In addition, camels are also largely indifferent to relatively extreme heat. They can go for days without needing any water and can happily chow down on many desert plants that horses and mules wouldn't even eat if they were starving to death. The advantage, of course, to humans about this is that that means that they can carry more of the stuff we need and less of the stuff that the animal needs to survive. When not under heavy load, camels can also run up to 40 miles per hour in short bursts, as well as sustain a speed of 25 miles per hour for as much as an hour. They are also extremely sure-footed and can travel in weather conditions that would make wagon use totally impractical. For this reason, a small but nonetheless dedicated group within the American American military in the mid-19th century was positively obsessed with the idea of using camels as pack animals and even potentially as cavalry. So it's noted at the time that the largest proponent of using camels was the Secretary of War, who was Jefferson Davis. Yes, that Jefferson Davis. Now, Davis particularly thought that the camel would be useful in southern states where the army was having trouble transporting supplies owing to the desert-like conditions that can be found in some regions. To solve the problem, Davis continually pushed for importing camels into America, including in a report to Congress that he wrote in 1854, where he stated, I again invite attention to the advantages to be anticipated from the use of camels for military and other purposes, and for reasons set forth in my last annual report, recommend that an appropriation be made to introduce a small number of the several varieties of this animal to test their adaptation to our country. So he actually got somewhere because in early 1855 Congress, they listened to him and they set out $30,000, which by the way, that's $800,000 today for just such an experiment. One Major Henry C. Wayne was then tasked with traveling all the way around the world to buy several dozen camels and bring them back to America. And this is where we tie it all into today in history because on June the 4th, 1855, well, he set out to find those camels. Besides going to places like Egypt and other regions that were known for their camel stock, Wayne also took a detour through Europe where he grilled various camel aficionados and zoological experts on how best to take care of the animal. After several months, Wayne returned to America with a few dozen camels and a fair amount of arrogance about his new endeavor. On that note, only about four months after taking a crash course in camel care, Wayne proudly boasted that Americans would manage camels Animals not only as well, but better than Arabs as they will do it with more humanity and far greater intelligence. Of course, when efforts on that front demonstrated that a little more experience was needed, various Arab immigrants who had experience managing the beasts were hired to head up the task. So this newly formed Camel Corps actually did quite well, such as managing to carry supplies from Texas to Arizona during a severe rainstorm that made using wagons impossible. Then there was this other expedition, and the man in charge of that trip was Edward Fitzgerald Beale. Afterwards, he reported back that just one camel was worth four of the best mules that were on that trip. Robert E. Lee would later state after another expedition where conditions saw some of the mules die along the journey that the camels had endurance, docility, and sagacity that will not fail to attract attention of the Secretary of War, and but for whose reliable services the reconnaissance would have failed. First of all, there was the fact that the camels have a legendary reputation for stubbornness and frequent temper tantrums. There was also the fact that the horses were getting nervous around them. Of course, horses could be trained to put up with camels, but the real issue was the human factor. Soldiers just preferred to deal with horses and mules, despite the disadvantages compared to camels in certain situations. General David Twigg very matter-of-factly stated, I prefer mules for packing. Later, just as big of an issue was the fact that it was Jefferson Davis who championed the idea in the first place. As you might imagine, during and after the Civil War, ideas he'd previously pushed for were not always viewed in the best light in the North. 
Unsurprisingly from all this, the Camel Corps idea was quietly dropped within a year of the end of the Civil War and later largely forgotten by history. However, some of the imported camels, including thousands imported by businesses around that same time that were rendered mostly useless with the establishment of the Transcontinental Railroad in the late 1860s, were simply set free with sightings of wild camels still a thing in the South going all the way up to the mid-20th century. And now let's have some bonus facts. Male Arabian camels begin courtship via more or less inflating a soft portion of their palate. They do this to the point where it protrudes up about a foot out of the mouth. This result is something that looks somewhat akin to an inflated scrotum hanging out of its mouth. On top of this, they use their spit to then make a low gurgling sound, with the result being the camel also appearing to foam at the mouth at the same time. If that is not sexy enough for those lady camels, they then rub their neck, which makes this nasty brown gooey substance, anywhere they can, and even pee on their own tails to increase their lady attracting stench. Now another bonus fact, even though today camels can only be found naturally in parts of Asia, the Middle East and Africa, camels are actually thought to have originated in the Americas around 40 million years ago. It's believed that they emigrated from America to Asia just before the last ice age. However, that being said, there were camels in North America as recently as 15,000 years ago. And now let's do another bonus fact. America isn't the only place that imported camels. Australia also imported up to 20,000 camels from India in the 19th century to help with exploring the country, much of which is desert. Ultimately, many camels were set free, and unlike in the US, the camel population in Australia flourished. Today, Australia is estimated to have one of the largest feral camel populations in the world, estimated at 750,000 camels in 2009. Indeed, this has actually been deemed something of an environmental problem. As you might expect then, the government has set up a program to cull the camels, with around a couple of hundred thousand being killed in the last several years in an attempt to control that population. So that was another Today in History. This is obviously one of the first ones we've ever made. We'd love to know what you think. Please do leave us a comment below. And if you like it, hit like. If you want to subscribe for more stuff like this, as well as our regular videos, which are going out just as the same as normal, well, do hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.